Welcome! This tutorial video will cover towing, repairing, and resupplying vehicles in Steel Beasts. We will first demonstrate how vehicles are towed, best practices for doing so, including specialized vehicles, and how towing fits in a simulated battle or operation. We will then discuss the topic of how to repair and resupply vehicles in a mission and what limitations there are for participants and mission designers. In Steel Beasts, there are situations where a vehicle may get bogged down in terrain with low traction or where the drag exceeds the traction, or where a tank has lost mobility due to minor damage to the vehicle, or even major damage that has caused the tank to lose power to move on its own. As a result, you will need to know how to tow a tank out of danger in extreme cases, or in less extreme circumstances, recover it to a point where it can be repaired and regain usefulness in the mission. To tow a vehicle, move the recovery vehicle close to the disabled vehicle. Left click on the recovery vehicle icon at the bottom of the 3D view, select tow vehicle from the menu, and click on the immobilized vehicle in the 3D view. There will be a delay of around 50 seconds while the towing equipment is attached to the vehicle. There will be a message confirming the vehicle is being hitched in the lower left corner, stating hitching vehicle. If you are too far from the vehicle, when you click to tow, you will not see the text label of the target vehicle's tactical call sign. Also, no hitching vehicle message will appear, obviously. You simply need to get closer until you can see the text label with the call sign appear at your mouse cursor position when hovering over the target vehicle. You will know you are close enough when the name of the unit you want to tow, for example one of one, appears in the cursor adjacent to the crosshairs for which unit to tow when you initiate towing mode. An additional delay may occur while the vehicle is winched close to the recovery vehicle. The vehicle will rotate towards the direction to travel. Note that you won't see a cable or rope between the vehicles once the vehicle is hitched. There is some invisible slack in the line that your vehicle will take up once it moves forwards, so there will be a delay between when the towing vehicle moves and when the towed vehicle follows. Once the vehicle is hitched and close, the recovery vehicle can be driven the usual way, if slower, and the disabled vehicle will follow in tow. To unhitch the disabled vehicle, left click on the recovery vehicle icon at the bottom of the 3D view and select Unhitch from the menu. This function can also be performed if the towing vehicle has been destroyed too. Note that it will take about 40 seconds for the unhitching process to complete. Note, every military vehicle may tow any other military vehicle, except helicopters, as long as they are of the same or higher mass. They must, however, move very close to the target vehicle, unlike an ARV, no winch, just fixed length cables, and it takes longer to hitch and disconnect a target. Armored recovery vehicles such as the M88A1 MRV, the Brem T16 ARV, and the Wiesent ARV can be used to accelerate the repair of immobilized vehicles and can recover vehicles which are bogged down, disabled, or have been destroyed. ARVs have a longer range they can hitch and tow from and also allow some advanced options in terms of mission scripting. It is possible to set waypoints with a special ARV option that instructs the ARV MRV to hitch to a vehicle in need. Recovery vehicle waypoints display a blue, semi-transparent, 250 meter recovery radius when assigned a special ARV command. It is possible to script recovery actions with the help of the corresponding commands ARV options, hitch nearby vehicle if, default option not towing vehicle, and unhitch vehicle if, default option is towing vehicle, referring to the activity, not the vehicle's class as a recovery vehicle as one might think. Obviously, if the ARV already has a vehicle in tow, it can't hitch another. By that same logic, you can set a waypoint for an ARV to unhitch and drop off a towed vehicle. Note that you cannot just script a hitch and unhitch command back-to-back, -back, but must put a stay or hold command on the hitch waypoint 
for it to stay long enough to complete its mission. You would then hit proceed to have it continue to the drop-off point. Technically, if the route leading away from the recovery scene has a delay condition set for about 60 seconds or more, giving the manual proceed command is not necessary, as long as the target is in winch range of the waypoint. Add more time to allow the ARV to move towards a vehicle in need. This makes it a bit difficult to predict how much time would actually be needed, which is why we don't recommend it. Also, it is important to note that the ARV under such commands will only hitch automatically to vehicles that are unable to move, such as those with tread, engine damage, or are destroyed. In the case of two vehicles with that disabled status within the 250 meter radius, the ARV will default to the nearest one to hitch for towing. The logic gets more complicated if there is a destroyed tank nearby to mobilize one. In that case, the ARV will favor the immobilized, a live tank, over the dead one. In the case of two destroyed tanks, once again, the ARV will favor the nearest one to the hitch point. Besides the major armored recovery vehicles that can repair and recover practically every full-size fighting vehicle, there are smaller support vehicles that can tow lighter vehicles and also assist with accelerating repair. In fact, in many military organizations, these vehicles, such as the M113 G3 DK Repair and the Ural 4320 Repair, are attached to the same company maintenance team that a vehicle like the WeSent belongs to for this purpose. A quick refresher on repair. When a vehicle is damaged in mission, the crew will attempt to fix systems on their own when able. As a result, you will see a countdown estimate for each system in hours and minutes until completed. In the case of multiple systems that are damaged, you may see multiple systems being repaired simultaneously. Some systems, such as the vehicle engine, will not be repairable without some kind of repair or supply vehicle helping with repairs. From that perspective, having any eligible repair or resupply vehicles in a mission can repair mission-critical systems and make the difference in getting units back into the fight. Additionally, supply vehicles such as these will resupply ammunition and repair most damage to other vehicles within a radius of about 75 meters, provided that the vehicles are not under attack and have been sitting still for about a minute. Resupply and repair will then begin, although it will take some time before they are completed. Fuel vehicles, such as these, will refuel other vehicles in the same manner. Some fuel vehicles can refuel two vehicles at a time, while others can refuel only one at a time. Putting a unit in coil formation with close spacing is a good way to ensure that the vehicles stay close to the supply or fuel vehicle. In the map screen, supply vehicles will display a semi-transparent blue 90 meter supply radius for each individual vehicle. Supply vehicles in formation will only show the lead vehicle's radius. For better control, it may be advisable to temporarily split the unit into individual vehicles until they need to move out again. Alternatively, where space allows for it, use column formation with the supply trucks in wide spacing. This maximizes the zone in which the adjacent units will be supplied. While supply trucks have some off-road capability, they work best when staying on roads, especially when fully loaded. This way, if the supply truck unit must move out in an emergency, you don't waste time with reassembling the platoon. The indications that the resupply is taking place can be seen in the 3D view in the top right hand corner where the ammunition counts or fuel percentage values will begin to increase as the resupply takes place. If the unit group comes under fire during a resupply procedure, the vehicles will cease to take supplies. This is obviously a moment of greatest vulnerability and a good reason to provide local security. In addition, a message will appear blinking in green color in the status bar at the bottom. 
Ambulances are special vehicles that are able to repair disabled crew members of vehicles. Ambulances have no effect on infantry. The ambulance will start its repair work when it gets within about 75 meters of a vehicle with a disabled crew member. Both vehicles must be stationary in order to do so. You will see a treating wounded message in the lower left hand area of the 3D view. Note that it can take an extensive amount of time for this process to complete and there will be a timer showing how much time left per crew member to repair if this process remains uninterrupted. Ambulances are considered special vehicles and will not be targeted by enemy units. Human students may be tempted to exploit this protected status according to international law in the game, for example, for reconnaissance and force. This is the reason why users of the personal edition cannot use binoculars in an external observer's position. Medics are not counted when comparing combat strengths in order to determine which party may own a contested region. As a mission creator, it is important to consider whether you would like a vehicle to be repairable later in the mission. This is because any damage set under the damage unit window will be permanent and not repairable. If a mission asset is meant to be recovered as part of that mission, or as a tactical option a participant can invest in, you will need to plan for this consideration ahead of time. Instead, use the Damage If option. And a start time such as 0, 0, 0 to start a vehicle with some initial damage that can later be addressed by participants in the mission. Additionally, this allows you to tie vehicle damage to other events to simulate breakdowns and other tactical crises to challenge participants and test certain tactical procedures. An example of this would be a vehicle breaking down on a mission-critical bridge crossing, necessitating the team affected to organize local security, assign a towing vehicle, and make plans for repair. Repair if. This submenu provides the ability to specify damages that will be repaired if certain conditions are met through the use of Boolean logic. Note that some types of damage will automatically be repaired during the execution phase, example given track damage, and some will not. This feature allows special conditions to be set to speed up repair or to repair damages that cannot be repaired by default. We hope you found this video helpful. Please let us know in the user forum at steelbees.com. Thank you.